Among players, particularly among British players, he's incredibly highly rated, adored, I'd say. And he has a way of, 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 of putting incredible feeling into everything that he does. I suppose technically he's very good, uh, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is the way that he plays. Dave's got a unique style that, fumbly, I think is the word I'd use. Um, I thought was... <laughs> um, Sorry, Dave. <laughs> I think, in fact, he does have a very specific style of his own um, and an ability to play in all sorts of different styles if necessary. But I think the thing I admire most is his ability to set, have a sense of the, of the music as a whole. I think, um, you know, from that point of view, he's been a, a very particularly important influence in the band. But he's had influence. He's definitely had influence. I think he's influenced me. Particularly on the new album, working with him, the way that he writes, again, it shows how gracefully and how naturally you can produce a good record. You know, it's that. It's a kind of effortless naturalness to it. I suppose it's all about moving people. I think the job is to, to move people and to move their emotions in one way or another with different pieces of music. To try and capture moments of magic within the music that you do. That's what I endeavour to do. I'm not ready to retire yet and uh, this is what I do for a living, is, is make music. And that involves both being on stages in front of audiences and making records. I think you tend to uh, dry up. I mean, you lose certain aspects of what you're good at if you don't practice them. aspect to the rehearsals was that I had to take out over a week of my allotted time to, to make videos. And um, having lost over a week of that, I was quite worried that I wouldn't have enough time to put the band into shape. I feel now much less nervous than I felt a couple of weeks ago, but the reality is creeping up. I shall probably be pretty nervous until I get on stage. I'm not feeling too bad about it at all right at the moment. And, uh, my confidence has grown over the last few days. It takes a fight to start a fight. Differences are made. guitarist with Pink Floyd doing a European tour. Uh, I'm a great fan of Pink Floyd and uh, I admire Dave Gilmore's guitar work tremendously. I, I do tend to play about with the guitar a bit myself and uh, I try and emulate him as much as I can but without much success at the moment.
where am I going to? Um, some place called the Zenith, where we're playing tonight. Paris, France. We're about to do our concert here in a large, sort of inflatable building called the Zenith. The Pink Floyd are considered very highly by the French, yes. I personally think that we should have used the Pink Floyd thing more in our publicity than we have done. I told them that it was fine to, to mention it because I don't think very many people. Um, you know, apart from real aficionados, are aware of the fact that my name is one of the people in Pink Floyd. And they tell me that it's very hard times here and that the touring isn't uh, going so well. And we look like we've sold a reasonable amount of seats tonight. Let's rerun the whole sound there. Uh, but it's still quiet now. It's doing now. You got some cable? Yeah. Well, what we have is an interference problem between the lighting and my amplification for my guitar. It's very awkward. It means I have to be very careful what I do. I just hope that I don't have to spend all my evening juggling around so that this sound isn't too obvious. Here. to make music I don't you know the trend towards having to leap about at maximum velocity all the time has never been something that has really appealed to me as being necessary there are moments when it's fun but there are a lot of songs where it really doesn't apply and you shouldn't do it can become lost in the music at times when you actually do get high. 
that's what you want to call it. You certainly sort of drift off into another space while you're actually playing. A type of magic happens, and um, I can feel it, and I know the audience feel it too. It, you, know, you just know that, that everyone is feeling it at the same time as yourself. So it doesn't happen very often, but it's great when it does. People come and they will uh, buy my record or they'll listen to my record or they'll come to my show and they will say, mm, well, that was as good as Pink Floyd or that wasn't as good as Pink Floyd and uh, that is what will happen, there's no doubt about that. Now, I will be compared to it. Between what we were doing when I first joined the Floyd, what I'm doing now, there is quite a, a, a fundamental difference between what we were doing as the Floyd during the 70s, um, you know, Dark Side of the Moon period onwards. There's no, there's no real fundamental difference. Did you get rid of all the voices in your head? The lyrics on those albums were written by Roger, not by me. You'd have to ask him about just how hard it was for him. He certainly seemed to have more difficulty dealing with stresses and strains than I did. There are things where it's discussing some of the strains that come on us and, and describing them, and I feel pretty, I feel fine about those things, you know. They, um, there are moments when it seems to me it's got very close to being complaining, and those are the ones that I don't like. There have been occasions where I've said, I, I would rather not sing this when you do it, you know. I hope that I enjoy the touring enough to, to want to continue doing more of the same thing, more albums. I don't want to get tied down into um, a permanent band lineup, or a permanent bunch of musicians, or a permanent style of anything. You know, I want to retain freedom in all areas to do anything that comes to mind at any one moment. You know, so if the next album, if I felt like doing something completely different to this one, I wouldn't want to feel committed to having to stick with him certain sort of guidelines that I've set up for myself. to explain them. I mean, I, I just like making music and performing it live and uh, all the things that go with it, including including the sort of ego gratification and the adulation of, of people out there. Uh, but also, you know, it's a great buzz when you go for things that work and it sounds good, you know. And it's wonderful to have a bunch of good musicians around you playing a song that you've written. It's great to go and watch someone else doing it as well. I've seen lots of them.
got to do a sound check. I don't care how many people there are, I can't do, can't do a conference now. I've got to do a sound check. Would, would you like that same thing again, or that be favourite? Okay. How did you get here? Right? Yeah, the, the click on the bass on the, on the tapes is pretty radical in places there, Rick. Well, maybe the others will do one for you without me. Without the help. He's not here. Who? French TV. TV people, they're just not interested. <laughs> what? Well, we all sit around feeling like turkeys for a few minutes and maybe they'll arrive. Watch a bit more exciting French television. See the day more of the This is the uh, camera in the dressing room in shot. Hold on the documentary crew. <laughs> Hard work at the beginning. A lot of nerves on stage, yes. yes. Mine. Gary! Telephone! Falling over my fingers and stuff, you know. Can you cut that? Come on, can we do that again, please? I'm sorry. I'm not
all had a heavy night tonight out on the booze, and I think they've just got in, and we're ready, ready to go again another day. Screw you, mate. I'm going to drive. Especially this one. <laughs> Give you ten minutes and you'll be gone. Seven o'clock in the morning, but that'll be sleep. Flat out in ten minutes. I like going and playing the places, but um. The, the living out of suitcases and travelling on coaches or aeroplanes and stuff is not enormously appealing. I don't like to be away from my wife and kids for long periods of time, but um, it's a necessary part of what goes on. And uh, so I have to just get on with it, so I don't really think of it. I don't get an answer, keep sending it fast, always the way was crazy. To put my love on the Smith Odeon is one of the two or three major sort of London venues that one plays. And it's the, the last real thing before we uh, get over to the States. And uh, we're ready. It's great if you can do it well. It's always a bit special to play in your hometown or to play in any of the real big cities, New York, Los Angeles, London, the three major cities. It's usually very difficult in London. Yeah. You wind yourself up too much about it, and uh, it's often disappointing. And uh, the audiences can be a bit blasé at times. If it comes over strongly in London, and it feels very good, then um, it will be uh, an achievement for me. Stand by then as all brothers are deranged. Four, you stay on uh, David, and that's ISO. Four's ISO, that's it. So we've got six and one. 